My name is Prince Olasheni Kosoko, and here is my good old days story. I was born at the Lagos Island maternity into a family of royals. My father, from the Kosoko royal chieftaincy family, is a fourth generation of the direct descendant of King Kosoko, who reigned as Oba of Lagos between 1845 and 1851. While my mother was from the Eletri Washet chieftaincy family, both of them of blessed memories. I come from a middle class family with my father starting off as a school teacher and ending up as a quantity surveyor, while my mother worked as a secretary stroke receptionist for a multinational company in Lagos. Even though I come from a Muslim home, I started my early schooling at the Holy Cross Catholic School at Oil Mill Street, Lagos Island. At the instance and insistence of Mrs. Ayodele, aka Mama Teacher, against my father's preference for a Muslim school. I had the opportunity to mix with my schoolmates as I had to walk the about three kilometers distance from my school in Oil Mill Street through Bangboshe Street with distractions along the way, especially at Iteku Cemetery where we pluck falling fruits, play pranks and those who had issue to sort with themselves will slug it out physically there. Then all the way to Massey Street where my math teacher served and had an after-school lessons for us. This is where I will have my lunch and siesta until my mom comes to pick me up for home after closing from work. By the way, the Itaku Cemetery located on Igbo Shere Road, Stroke Joseph Street, is where great sons of Lagos like Abad Macaulay, Ajayi Crowder, etc. were buried. Their remains were later removed from there and the cemetery later gave way to a sports center. We lived at Evans Street, Lagos Island, opposite the Eti Chieftaincy Family Palace in the 60s and until the early 70s, when we moved to the middle class through Lere neighborhood, where I lived most of my formative years. Those were days when the Lagos Municipal Transport Service, otherwise known as LMTS buses number 28, conveyed us from the popular CMS bus stop to the end of Adelabu Street, where we resided. Bus number 27 takes you to Ogunlano Drive, and my stop was Alaji Masha bus stop. My sojourn in life took me to Comprehensive High School, Ayetoro in Ogun State, where I was privileged to meet other students from diverse backgrounds, including foreigners. It was a very interesting period, having to leave Lagos on my own for the first time. We boarded vehicles flying Lagos to Abeokuta, from where we connect the buses that take us to Ayetoro. It was always very amusing when you read such inscriptions like, One with God, no hurry in life, Waleki ojoko oluwa Jisoro kbawo, etc, etc, on those buses. The most amazing way to feel your arrival in Abeokuta is the loud music of Ainlao Mawura, the Akpala legend that rents the air through the length and breadth of the motor park at Lafenwa and indeed any motor park in Abeokuta. My holidays were very exciting and something to long for because I would spend part of it with my paternal grandmother at Isaleko where she plied a trade in the sale of fried fish and shrimps. Staying with her offered me all opportunity to explore the wider Lagos. Lagos Lagoon at Ebuteiro and environs, including the Igaidun Goro Palace, where the late Oba Adeyinka Oyekon II threw the gates of the palace open to all and sundry. I recall with nostalgic feelings how we as children go to play with our neighborhood friends, tire out after play, have dinner, and rest our heads in our neighbors' houses without any fear of abuse or molestation. My extended family, even though was largely dominated by Muslims, comprises of Christians and traditionalists. We all partook in all the celebrations through festivals like Eid al-Malud, Eid al-Fitri, Eid al-Kabir, Ileya, Christmas, Easter, Eyal Masquerade, Egungun, Gelede, Efe, and Fanti festivals. What with the visits to the sandy beaches in Lagos, to the beaches of Badagri, where we also had the opportunities to visit the first story building in Nigeria, 
as well as the relics of slave trade in Nigeria and the point of no return, where the ships who took slaves away depart from. How can I forget my first trip to the United Kingdom in 1980 via Nigerian Airways when my return ticket was bought at the cost of 297 naira and full BTA of 1000 naira got me 780 pounds sterling and no visa was required for such trip. Life was so good that my Lagos State bursary of 500 naira per session was more than enough to form a big boy. Remarkably, a close friend and I combined equal contributions of 300 naira each and bought a Volkswagen Gala for 600 naira in 1980, a car we jointly owned and drove around Lagos. Did we paint Lagos red? The rest is left for your imagination. Hmm, so much to learn from the strong communal bonds of those days. A lot to digest about religious tolerance in those days. So, where did we get it wrong? Will our children believe us when we say we had so much fun in those days? I wonder how fast we have lost our moral and to a large extent cultural values. For me, it is not a hopeless situation. All lads should therefore be on deck to continue to inculcate those time-tested values in our children for a better society. We can change the narrative. Our children must now be made to embrace the time-honored value of integrity, honesty, and respect for the dignity of others. Our challenge will now be to focus on how we can, instead of talking about the good old days, be projecting into a future that is greater than our past. Our children certainly deserve a brighter and better tomorrow, not the good old days. I therefore join others in joining Sashemo Oribadejo in this collective drive towards a greater tomorrow. Thank you.